So we live in a world where data belongs to those who collect it. So even though the data is about you, you checked into this hotel, you bought something in the supermarket, you searched online, you did something and it's all about you, that data is not owned by you. It's owned by the institution that collects it. We give our data away to anybody with very little thought. I mean, how many times have many people actually read the terms and conditions of an app or a website or anything like that? Many of them will have clauses that say, you give us your data, we're allowed to do what on earth we like with it. Every time you click on something, every time you read an article, every time you interact with your phone, every time we interact with anything that's related to the internet, we leave a footprint. If we go to a search engine, they will keep a record of what we searched for, where we were when we searched for it, and often what we clicked on, where we went to afterwards. When that realization hits you, you suddenly think, but I'm, this is stuff I'm doing, but somebody else can potentially profit from that. And as things are becoming more connected, even more data is being generated. The Internet of Things is a big movement now worldwide about activating or connecting objects through the Internet. This is what I call the Internet jumping out of the box. So your toaster could communicate with your coffee maker saying, hey, it's 7.30. We need to turn ourselves on because it's breakfast time. Your refrigerator notices that you're low on milk and orders some from your chosen supermarket website. It's date night and your account from Netflix knows that you've been watching action movies these last few months. And as soon as you get in, once dinner's ready, because the oven will have told it, it will then have the film ready for you. We now find ourselves increasingly in a digital world where much of our lives can be sort of seen digitally. And that's what we often term as big data. That big data is what is stumping a lot of people right now. They're going like, oh, look at this big data. Surely we must be able to organize and see live, see how people live, what people do. Because understanding what you do is very powerful in terms of how you buy and how you behave. The firms want to get into your homes. They want to know what you do because they can then understand better about how we use things and why we use them. Some people will be listening to this and saying, well, it's fine, I don't mind giving my search data to Google because I get a really decent search out of it. And I love all their products that they've managed to create because they've been using my data. And that's fine. Other people on the other hand suddenly go, it's like Big Brother's watching me, it's a spying, they're, they're in my home, they know everything I do, um, and I don't like it. There are different ways to solve the privacy issue. One way of doing it is to just withdraw from this digital world. We cancel our Facebook accounts, we stop using Google. The other way of doing it is to regulate and say, you've got to keep the data private, you can't share it with anybody. But that ends up increasing costs for companies. And that then leads to companies saying, well, why should I innovate then? Why should I bother to make cool stuff? You get into what we call a downward spiral. You've got less businesses out there, less innovation, less jobs. This is not doing well. So how do we reverse this? How do we get the digital economy to spiral upwards rather than downwards? The way to think about it is maybe you should just return it to me. The problem here is that if everybody returned the data to you, what are you going to do with it? So the hub of all things is it's a combination of, of many different streams of research to create an app store or some sort of market for your personal data. It's not so much about stopping your data getting out as it is saying, here, I've got all this data that you want, come and get it in exchange for something. We like to think that you should have a hat like the way you have an email. Just imagine it's your database, but transformed from all the verticals towards a horizontal type of database. What does that mean about how I live my life? To understand meaning, data has to be contextualized. So that's the difference. Now when it's contextualized and it starts becoming valuable to you, it's now worth something. It's like your digital asset. And so we're just really trying to create something that appeals to everyone, but will give that sort of sense of comfort and control over our data. For the most part, there's a clear feeling that more control is good. The data's all there. It's just not done and organized in a way that helps the way we live our lives. If we could buy apps to analyze it, apps to visualize it, could I get more personalized advice? personalized services. We're trying to make consumers smarter, more empowered, but at the same time make companies make better stuff, better services, better products. If a company can serve one, it potentially can serve one billion, and you create a market, you create a future.